Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Camera Music, a production of the Chamber Music Society of Detroit. I'm Steve Wagaman, president of the Chamber Music Society, and I'm here on the stage of Varner Recital Hall at the School of Music, Theater, and Dance at Oakland University. And out in the audience is Amy Tully, a member of the Chamber Music Society board and the director of the School of Music, Theater, and Dance at Oakland University. And so, hi, Amy, and thank you. Hi. <laughs> uh, we're also here uh, in our pre-concert time with Shui Wang, pianist, who is the artist for tonight's program, and Andrew Rindfleisch, who is the composer of one of the pieces on her program. And so, uh, just a quick welcome to both of you. Uh, it's so fantastic to welcome you here and to be able to do this program that is semi-live. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, exactly. And, uh, and Shui, we go way, way back, mm -hmm. actually. Um, you're a, a fixture in, in the Cleveland, Ohio area, and we met in Canton, Ohio. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, that was uh, some time ago, but I'm so, so happy to be here and seeing you and, and be tonight's yeah, program. Yeah. Yes. Well, you teach at the Cleveland Institute of Music, yes. and then I knew you because you were the orchestra pianist of the Canton Symphony Orchestra in Ohio. Yes. Uh, but you are also just such a marvelous solo pianist, and so we thought, thought it was just wonderful to have you here. Thank you. You're playing music by Bach yes. and Beethoven. Uh, what Bach are you playing? I am performing tonight uh, the second partita uh, in C minor. Yep. Okay. And, and that's... Uh, Maybe not the most often played, but it's a it's a beautiful piece. Yes, um, I think uh, that may be actually often played perhaps by Glenn Gould. I know he recorded, and you know, um, there are some documentaries uh, actually um, when he you know how practices on especially the the first movement, uh, the overture. So, um, and um, yes, I actually. Um, I actually have been with this piece for a long, long time, and uh, obviously when I was a student at the institute. So uh, after all those years to come back for the first time, it's definitely uh, brings about a lot of memory, and it's just a, another growth uh, on me for sure. Right. Well, you know, if you explore Shui Wang on YouTube, you will find lots and lots of performances of of uh, music from the Baroque. Uh, and you have just a unique uh, approach you. to that. In fact, one of the performances that, that I remember Shui gave in Canton, in Ohio, was uh, on the harpsichord. Yes. Uh, the Fifth Brandenburg Concerto. It was yes. just beautiful. Oh, played. thank you. Yeah, it was. It was so much fun. Uh, I mean, that's such a virtuosic piece. Um, again, for for harpsichord, uh, of course, instead of in the back, it's in the front. So. Um, yeah, it was that was a lot of fun with the uh, all the musicians and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and there's a an interesting connection. I was chatting with Andy before uh, we came out on stage, and uh, uh, Andy, tell us a little bit about the connection between Bach and the second piece on the program, which is your Reverie. Yeah, my p solo piano piece is entitled Reverie and was uh, uh, composed in 1999, so it's a 21-year-old piece now. But uh, at the time it was commissioned uh, by a pianist in New York, John Kamitska, who um, specifically asked me for a piece that had something to do with Bach. He was going to program the piece on a program with the Goldberg Variations and wanted a contemporary piece that um, had something to do with Bach, but he left that up to me. And uh, so um, I approached the piece um, as a kind of uh, memory of Bach's music, uh, almost like a child's daydream of Bach's music. So a reverie is a kind of reverent um, memory of uh, how I used to daydream about uh, his music um, when I was a kid. And so you'll, you'll find a lot of allusions to Bach's music. It's not gonna sound like Baroque music. It's gonna sound like very spatial, sort of the expanse of the piano to create the atmosphere of a daydream. And, uh, and I use a lot of Bach quotes, melodic quotes from partitas and even solo cello music. Um, but at the central core of the piece is uh, 
um, the sort of harmonic design of uh, one of my favorite chorales, Schmucker dich o liebe Seele. So that's... Uh, Say that behind a mask. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the uh, sort of the, the foundation of the piece. And, uh, and it's a, kind of a dramatic piece for the pianist, uh, gesture, gesture-wise. Lots of gestures and, and voice leadings that in Bach oftentimes, you know, uh, don't uh, go outside the octave. But here it might be a three or four octave voice leading kind of a, right. sort of expanse of the piano. And so she does it very nicely. The organ range. Yes. Yeah. And in fact, the piece is notated as an organ piece with three staves. Is it? Yes. Wow. Yeah. I guess that probably makes it a little bit easier to read than with all the big distances. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and tell us what you do. You, you live in Cleveland also, obviously. Yep. Uh, or you would be socially distanced. <laughs> well, uh, what, what do I do? Yes. I, I teach composition at Cleveland State University. Right. I, I head the music composition program there, and I've uh, been there for uh, over 20 years now. So, um, fantastic. In fact, Reverie was composed just after I moved to moved to Cleveland. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, Cleveland is is one of the, I, I guess, the great musical centers of the world. Uh, of course, the Cleveland Orchestra is the 800-pound gorilla in town. And CIM has joined at the hip. You teach at Cleveland Institute. Yes, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. um, after I finished my doctorate there, so um, shortly after, I became on the faculty. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have one more piece on your program. Correct. Uh, no one's ever heard of it. Yeah, it's a very so. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the Walsh time. Yes. Yes, uh, another monumental piece by Beethoven. And of course, 2020 this year, uh, his big birthday. Um, right. So, Which most of us are missing yes. in live performances. So that's even more reason how grateful and happy that I am able to share that with all of you tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll uh, uh, true confessions, I played the Waldstein Sonata once in public for a doctoral recital and then never touched it again. Uh, but do you find that the second movement is almost like a Baroque introduction to a third movement? I mean, it, it has this kind of, yeah, exactly. in the trio sonatas, you have this, this sort of slow introduction to something faster and it feels like that exactly. that second movement of the Waldstein is, is a little bit like that. Yes, exactly. I I'm, I'm, I think it's it's kind of, Dark. I mean, it starts with a very low register, and how he kind of moves slowly, of course, bring the hands far, far apart. At the end of the second movement, it goes into this just heavenish, you know, C major, you know, with the, th the, the, the third movement opening. I think it's just kind of like the light um, that's shining upon us. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. It, it sounds like another approach from a composer we just heard from. <laughs> well, you know, when I think about the, the Waldstein, like the second movement is almost like a, um, a big upbeat to a colossal final movement, yeah. which um, starts out in this beautiful kind of uh, atmospheric music and then turns into this uh, gigantic, um, uh, you know, virtuosic, uh, you know, sort of, unplayable movement at, at, at times. Yeah. Do you find as a composer that um, in a sense with everything that's come before, you're kind of emancipated from having to carve out a distinctive modern style? Mm -hmm. that, I mean, you, 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 you could choose from anything. Yeah, well so many composers nowadays come from so many different musical backgrounds. You know, some some have deep classical backgrounds. Some some have uh, you know popular music backgrounds, um, and uh, uh, there isn't really a. I don't think there's an expectation anymore of what you're supposed to be doing, um, other than to do what you you know to to to, to create your own voice. It's still important, yes. uh, but um, uh, I don't think there's a lot of judgment going around anymore. To, to that you know, that's. People should be doing this or that, or the, you know. Right. 
So I think I think we lived there through a time when there kind of was. And if you weren't if you weren't doing composition a certain way, you weren't taken seriously, and and that's fortunately gone by the wayside. Yeah, that that doesn't mean that some some of that music wasn't valuable. Um, yeah. That's not to say that, but um, uh, everybody has their own path, you know, their own trajectory. I think. So we're going to hear one short piece of yours. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us about some of the other highlights of your work. Oh, I have uh, um, I have I, I have a lot of choral music. I've written a, about thirty choral pieces, wow. um, and uh, that comes from my background in singing from a long time ago in, in, in very good choirs, and uh, and and a lot of instrumental music, um, lots of chamber music, solo pieces, um, and uh, wind ensemble pieces, orchestra pieces. So. Um, nothing's off the table. Uh, right. yeah. if, if I may add, um, exactly nothing off the table. Um, we actually, well, I was part of this big ensemble that we premiered at Cleveland. It's sort of the collection of three, I want to say, yes, three um, uh, new music ensembles plus uh, other in uh, musicians around town, but it's scored for four grand pianos and four percussionists, um, of course, uh, strings and uh, brass. It's, it's just an amazing piece. Of course, it's really relevant. Uh, the title is American Monster. American Monster? <laughs> well, I wrote a big piece. It's for four, four concert uh, D grand pianos mm -hmm. um, and four percussion and chamber orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, so a chamber orchestra and eight instruments that can drown it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, but it's, yeah. it's really... It's not, a, it's not an economical piece. No. I'm not going to get a lot of performances of that piece, but... Um, but you should check it out, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, it's really... Some, some and of it's called American are, Monster? Yep. I will check it out. Check it out, yes, yes. Uh, I have to say, the beginning is one of my favorite beginning, just the sound. Um, uh, together, just everyone together is just phenomenal. Of course, the musicians are all fantastic to work yeah. with. So, it was yeah. Of course, piano and percussion is an amazing combination. We just had a, a, a duo piano team do the the bar talk for us a couple of seasons mm. ago. It was uh, completely yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but I imagine that sounds that sounds just delicious. Yes, exactly. Uh, maybe we'll have to figure out a way to well. Not enough room here. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, how have how have you been coping with uh, the pandemic? I, I, mm. I, you know, this is um, this is certainly the first uh, live piano recital we've had mm -hmm. uh, since this all began. Uh, I hope I'm not leaving anyone. Oh no, that's not true. We had uh, we had a couple of them, but they weren't in they weren't in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Um, one came from Philadelphia, and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, you're actually, I think, the first artist, uh, first pianist anyway, to travel to Detroit to play, a, I see. Metro Detroit, to play a recital. This is Rochester Hills. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, tell me how, what's life been like? Hmm. Well, um, I, I, you know, I think I was... Definitely part of the the baking phenomena in the beginning, just because you know you were suddenly locked in, couldn't go out. You know, you, you, everything just you have to learn. Um, there's all this new way of teaching of you know technologies, um, and actually it was kind of nice to be at home um, to kind of just relax because. I, I often travel so much um, because of work or because of concerts, for sure. And uh, suddenly, there was there was nothing, especially during the summer. Um, but I do have to say, compare maybe some of the, let's say, general public um, people. I'm extremely grateful. I can't say enough. And just to be a, as a musician, um, to be able to sort of fulfill myself 
spiritually, mentally, uh, even just physically, um, with this skill that I have. Um, even though I could not share at the beginning with others, but for myself, because I was, I was really emotionally down for a bit, and you know, just to be able to go back and play just anything, even. Um, um, of course, was working on some of the things, ho hoping, you know, some of the concerts wouldn't be completely canceled. So I was still working on some of the repertoire, but just to be able to play, and I, 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 I just feel so complete um, at days. Um, I feel so happy um, mm -hmm. be able to sit down and, and sh you know, maybe even share with my family. I did do a couple of very small, informal Zoom concerts um, for my family and also for, actually, for a couple of the nursing homes because I felt um, they were, of course, during the April, May time, they were the, the most hit because um, the music was their main source of, of again, spiritually sort of that, that um, they, they lean on, um, they look forward to. So I actually give them a couple Zoom concerts. Um, wow. So that was really fulfilling, I think, for both everyone. Um, but yeah, so. And you're teaching a lot. Yes. But are you doing it by Zoom, or is it, are you doing any of it in person? Now, um, as the school started, yeah, I am, at, I am doing 50-50, I would say. Some um, in, in person, um, of course, with uh, restrictions, but some still are, are online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And how are things at Cleveland State? Are you teaching? Uh, are you back to teaching there as well? Well, I'm teaching, but I'm doing all remote this semester. Are you? Yeah. Um, some, some people are doing face-to-face, -face, but mo I'm doing all remote. It's been a challenge. Well, I know that here at Oakland University, there's, uh, you're being extremely careful. This is not something to mess with. No. Nope. Um, and, and we will come out on the other end of it, and we'll be making music and yeah. seeing each other. But uh, exactly. uh, we're certainly grateful to have the technology that allows us to continue sharing this music. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, uh, we will uh, give you an opportunity to take a little bit of a break and and then come back and play this beautiful recital for us. Thank you so much. I I, I, I can't thank you enough for having me, uh, especially during this uh, unusual time. And I can't wait to share tonight's program with everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us, Andy. Thank you.
Good evening, and welcome to Camera Music, a production of the Chamber of Music Society of Detroit. I'm Steve Wagaman, president of the Chamber of Music Society, and it's an incredible pleasure to welcome you here at Varner Recital Hall on the campus of Oakland University in the School of Music, Theater, and Dance, where we're presenting a recital tonight by Cleveland pianist Shuai Wang. I know you're in for an incredible treat, and we want to thank Oakland University for helping to make this concert possible. And we also want to thank all of you who have made contributions to our camera music fund that helped to make this concert possible. More information about this can be found on our website, cmsdetroit.org. But now, please join me in welcoming Shuai Wang. Thank you. 